using markers allows the user to mark a signal in order to accurately determine the frequency and power level of that signal. The signal hawk has up to six markers that can be activated to assist the user to find wanted signals and also uncover interfering signals. While the signal hawk is sweeping, you can easily zero in on a signal when it appears. To turn on a marker, press the following keys. Mark and limit. We want to select marker 1 and turn it on. When I press marker display, it takes me to another menu where I can turn all the markers to type icon from a line. Now we have an icon marker. If I use the thumb wheel and rotate it to the left or the right or left arrow keys, I can move my marker to my desired signal. It also displays up in this corner that I'm at about 465.4 megahertz. If I press the marker more button, and press center frequency to marker, it moves the marker that I have marked on the signal to the center of the screen. I can also fine tune a little bit and put exactly where that marker is. If a second signal came in, I can turn on a second marker by selecting marker 2 and notice that immediately marker 1 turns blue. This means that it is still active but my scroll wheel or my left or right arrows will not move that marker. Now if I turn marker number 2 on and use my wheel I can mark my second signal. Now because I have a very wide sweep, or a very wide span, everything is closer together. In order to move these apart a little bit, I would need to narrow my span. So I would go to my frequency and span menu, and I have a very wide span. If I set that to 100 megahertz, it should give me a little bit of separation. I can take this down to 50 megahertz and move them apart a little bit more. If I go back to my mark and limit menu, now number two marker is green and active so I can move my wheel and get right to the center and by pressing the select marker button until I have marker 1 active, now I can move it. Marker 1 is at 467.5 megahertz, marker 2 is 462.5.